Hello and welcome to ECMATH. Today we're going to do a brief introduction to how to graph parametric equations. In calculus and especially in physics context, it's incredibly helpful when analyzing motion to separate horizontal motion from vertical motion. For example, in this video of a ball being thrown upwards in a moving truck, it was incredibly important that the horizontal motion of the ball and the vertical motion of the ball were independent of each other, leading to an interesting uh, development where the ball actually traveled in what appears to be a parabolic path, landing safely back in the moving truck, even though you might expect that it flies out the back. It's a nice video, and if you haven't seen it, I'll leave the link in the show notes. And the key observation in this video and in many other situations is that when we're trying to analyze the motion of the ball, uh, that y and x, does y depend on x? Not really. Does x depend on y? Not really. Both x and y of the motion here, the vertical and horizontal motion, depend on a hidden parameter, and that parameter is time. We usually use the variable t for that parameter. So generally, a set of parametric functions is a single function with two components, an equation for x in terms of t, an equation for y in terms of t, and then potentially some bounds on t to tell us where t starts and ends. And let's go right into it with an example of a parametric equation and what it looks like. Parametric equations can be written in a lot of different ways. Sometimes you'll see them written with a name. This one's called R of t, which is pretty common in calculus. And it's sometimes written like a piecewise function where you have the x component and the y component written uh, vertically stacked. Uh, other times you'll see the x component and y component just written next to each other, like in example two, which we'll come to. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you see these. But what's important is that x here is depending on t and y is also depending on t, and together they're going to make their own function. So how do we plot this weird looking function? Well, we make a chart, but instead of just making a two-way chart where we would have x and y, we make a three-way chart. I've already started it over here. We have t, and then x, and then y. And so to plot this function, the first thing we have to do is fill out this chart. Um, the first thing you need to do is pick some appropriate values of t. Now here they've given us t must range between 0 and 4 inclusive. So we're just going to pick the values of t 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, then I'm going to look at the x equation and it says x equals t. So x just needs to equal the value here. 0, uh, when t is 0, x is 0. When t is 1, x is 1, and so on. The y one's a little harder. We have to plug in the value. So when t is 0, 4 times 0 minus 0 is still 0. 4 times 1 is 4 minus 1 squared is 3. I'll just show the math in here. Um, 2 times 4 is 8 minus 2 squared is 4. So that's going to come out to 4. 3 times 4 is 12, minus 3 squared, which is 9, uh, minus 9, sorry, and that's equal to 3. And 4 times 4 is 16, minus 4 squared, which is also 16, gives us 0. So we have our, uh, our t values, and from our t values, we got an x and y values. Now what we're going to do is go draw a set of axes and plot these x and y values as if they were coordinate pairs. So like this x and y create a single coordinate pair, 0, 0. To save a little time, I've already plotted those over in a Desmos tab. So let's pop over and take a look at that. OK, so I've got my x and y values. I couldn't put the t values in this table, but I've got the x and y values plotted. And they're plotted over here on this curve, just the exact same points that we computed earlier. Um, so once you plot your points, the next step you have to do is connect the dots. I've got Desmos set up to connect these automatically because I've already typed in the equation. By the way, this is the syntax for uh, plotting parametrics in Desmos. So you plot it in parentheses like a point using t as your variable. Um, and I've got a slider set up. So when I press play, it will draw the function and connect the dots. And here's what it looks like. And so we can see that this function might be a good thing to model pair uh, projectile motion, something uh, going launched up 
and turning around and falling right back down. You can even see how the object or the particle might be slowing down at the top of its arc and then speeding up as it moves towards the bottom. So you can think about these parametric equations as modeling the motions of objects or projectiles or um, particles moving around in space. All right, we're gonna pause this and take this graph back to our OneNote and add a couple things because there's some things that Desmos doesn't do that I'd like you to add to your graphs. Okay, we're back in our tab with our table and our work and I've just pasted this in. You can imagine that you have just plotted these points by hand. Um, but what we need to do now is add some arrows that show the direction of the curve because parametrics all are, are all about motion over time. We started right here at the initial point and we ended right there at the terminal point. Um, and so we need to show the direction of motion from start to end. And the traditional way to do that is just to stick some little arrows right on the curve. You don't have to do too many. Three or four is fine. Just like that. You don't put arrows at the start and end unless the curve continues infinitely. So since this curve stopped, I'm putting dots at the end and the arrows in the middle to show that this was the direction of motion, but also that it stopped when uh, we hit four as if like the object had hit the ground. Here's another example that showcases a weird property of parametric equations and some of the power of them. Uh, so we have x equals t squared minus two, y equals negative t, and we're given bounds on t between negative one and positive two. So let's go ahead and make our uh, three-way t chart and fill in the values of t, x, and y. So we'll start with the values of t. We're going negative one uh, goes to zero, and then one, and then two. Uh, so I only need those values, so that's where we will uh, stop. I don't need these lines. Um, x, well, we can do x first. Uh, the y will be easier, but we'll do the x first. So uh, negative 1 squared is 1. Minus 2 is negative 1. 0 squared is 0. Minus 2 is negative 2. 1 squared minus 2 is negative 1. And 2 squared is 4. Minus 2 is 2. So we just go negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, positive 2. And let's look at what's happening with the y. So we're going the opposite of t. So this y is going to be 1. The opposite of 0 is 0. Uh, the opposite of 1 is negative 1. And the opposite of 2 is negative 2. And now we're going to pop. We could plot these, of course, by hand. Um, but we're going to pop into Desmos and connect these points over there and then see what we've got. So here we are. I've got the points plotted in a table. There was just four of them again. Uh, again, not including the t's, but just including the x and y's from the work. Here's the function, and I can uh, we'll display it when we press play here. It's going to start at the point negative 1, 1, so we know that's here, and it's going to end when we get to 2, negative 2. So it's probably going to do some kind of connection like this, but let's press play and see. So this, again, might represent the motion of a particle moving around in space. Maybe there's a, like, this could represent a car taking a curve and you're trying to analyze maybe the velocity or speed of that car as it's going around the curve. Um, but what's cool about this, to me at least, is that it does not represent, if we pause it, in rectangular mode, this would not be a function. It would fail the vertical line test. But it is a function because the x and y are actually functions of t. And so we can still, as long as we've parameterized it, analyze this as if it was a function, find things out about it, even though the graph itself doesn't look like a regular function. I'm gonna just copy this guy and put it back over in our OneNote. All we need to do is add our arrows that show the direction of the curve and we'll be done. So let's add those in. So we are starting here and we're traveling this way, traveling that way. So good, good four arrows is fine. Um, just to show the direction of the curve and where you're starting and where you're ending. Um, so this is a good example of some of the power of parametric functions and some of the strange things you can get when you're plotting these plane curves. Um, that's, by the way, why these are called plane curves, uh, is because they exist in the plane and they are you know, generally curves. They can be straight lines. They don't have to be curvy, um, but they're often curvy. And they represent things that might not look like functions, but they do represent you know, things that are curving around in the plane. So that's why they have that name. One last parametric function that we're going to look at, and probably the most important one, is this one right here. We'll call it example three, and we'll find out what it is in a moment. Uh, for this one, we have x is 2 cosine t, y is 2 sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. Um, so let's 
think carefully about our table. Well, we definitely start at zero, and we can definitely end at two pi. Um, but if we're thinking about easy values to plug in, probably the easiest values are going to be the four quadrant angles. One, we have zero, two pi, but here, here, here. So let's just type those in. So we'll have pi over two, pi, come on, where are you? Pi, three, pi over two, and then back to two pi. And we actually know, we can do a lot of this by hand. So cosine of zero is one times two is two. Sine of zero is zero. So that y is zero. Um, and I'm just going to fill in the rest of these based on what we know about the cosine and sine at all these other values. Remember, sine is the y, so at pi over 2, the y is 1, and then times 2, we get 2. And back to 0. So let's think about, before we go uh, plot anything anywhere, let's think about what this might look like. So if we were to plot this out, on a grid, we'd have 2, 0. Oh, big boy. Okay. 0, 2. Negative 2, 0. 0, negative 2. And then we come back to 2, 0. And there's probably only a couple choices. It could be, I suppose, a diamond, but it is probably going to be a circle. And in fact, it is. Now, if we want to confirm that this shape is a circle, we don't just have to use Desmos. We obviously could type that in and see that it's a circle. But I'm going to show you how to use your good old TI-84 to graph this guy in parametric mode. So we've already learned about polar mode. This is going to be uh, finishing our study of like the different modes on your calculator and different things that we can do with the uh, that nifty tool in your toolbox. Uh, so let's get the calculator on up and turn it on, starting from a fresh screen. Um, we are doing trig, so we're going to press mode, double check that we're in radians. We are, and we're going to flip while we're in mode over to PAR for parametric. Different models might say this differently, but some version of PAR. And then we're going to go to our Y equals, and you'll notice it looks a little different. We have X1 of T and Y1 of T, because every parametric function has an X and a Y. So uh, we're just going to type in the X and Y we have here, two cosine t. Where's t? Don't use the t that's in the green lettering. That one won't work, but the one that will work is this one right here by the variable button, x t theta n. That t is the parametric mode t. So we have 2 cosine t. Lock it in. Enter. 2 sine t. Close your parentheses. Lock it in and enter. Now we do need to set our bounds on t, or at least double check, and those can be found in the window menu. So in the window menu, we have a t min which is set to zero, that's correct. We have a T max, which is set to 6.28. That is two pi, but just to clear it out, we can double check two pi. And then when you press enter, it'll just turn it back in. T step is just the resolution of the curve. It's kind of like how frequently it's plotting values in its own little table, that's fine. Um, and the rest is sort of the bounds on your window. So um, let's make this a little nicer. We're only going between negative two and two. So let's go to like maybe negative four to four. 4 and negative 4 to 4, just to make it look nice. Now we can just press graph and we'll get a nice circle. Well, kind of looks like an egg. That's because you're in this rectangular screen. So if we want to fix that, we can always go uh, zoom 5, zoom square, and that'll fix us up. It zoomed us back out, but now we get a nice circle from that zoom square. And that's how you use parametric mode on your calculator. One other really cool trick is once you have these in your y equals, say you have a teacher that's making you show your table of values, you can go to the second graph and access the table of values for that parametric. Uh, so if you wanted to get some specific numbers, say we were doing like example one or two up there, we didn't want to do all that hard math, we could just use this table to pull those numbers in. Um, here, the table isn't quite matching because it's going by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we were going by pies, so it's not exactly perfect. 
um, but it's pretty good for all kinds of other parametrics. In fact, just to, to kind of further demo this, um, let's go back and look at this example too and put it in our calculator. So we're going to clear this guy out and just do a t squared minus 2 and clear this guy out. And we called this one negative t. Now we do need to change our t bounds because we're going from negative 1 up to positive 2. I think the rest of the window will be okay because it was like still a little bigger than this. And we can press uh, second table. And now we have exactly the table we made here, but just it was made a lot faster and it includes some extra values that if we needed them, we could have them. And if we want to see the graph, we can just press graph. Hey, there it is. So another really powerful feature of your calculator that you probably didn't know was there. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. This has been ECMath. Now, hopefully you know how to plot plane curves and roughly what parametrics are and what they might be good for. I'll see you in class. Have a good night.